and just how packed into the paint they were and if there was an adjustment that you had to make, uh, if at all? Um, well, they were packing the paint because they were forcing us to make shots. Uh, and we, we didn't make shots game one um, tonight. You know, got, got back in the rhythm, made some shots, and we were able to get to the point, to the paint then um, after we seen the ball, you know, go from three a couple times, uh, which opens the floor for, for everyone. Um, and so we just got to stay locked in, you know, keep taking the time, uh, especially when we catch the ball on the, on the three and, and keep continue, continue to knock them down, which is going to open up the paint for post-ups or drives. Um, and then when they do come and help, you know, making that the right pass, the extra pass to to open shooters to knock down more shots. So um, the difference in the game was just uh, making shots. And then I think we did a great job defensively. And I think they had 88 points. And that's a team who's been very hot from three, from mid-range, Had some mistakes towards the end. Um, two on one on one part, but uh, tonight we came out with a sense of desperation, a sense of urgency on the defensive end, and was able to turn a lot of those stops to, to bad break points. Hey, what's the biggest key for you defensively as the secondary defender on either Lillard or McCollum when they're coming out screen roll action? AD, what do you have to focus on as the helper? Just being up, you know, those two guys, especially Dane, you know, likes that, that deep ball three. Um, so just being up trying to take that away and, and make those guys, you know, beat us with scoring twos. Um, they're a really great three-point shooting team, and, you know, we just try to take those shots away and, um, you know, make somebody else beat us. But if they do, you know, have the ball in their hands, make them, make them force them into the two-point area and, you know, live with a contestant. If they make it, then we tip our hats to them. But, um, you know, we really want to take away the focus on taking away that three. Allie? Uh, he, um, you had a couple of shots in, from mid-range the first quarter that weren't falling. It seemed like you made a point to kind of attack the basket more. And then that third quarter, down your touch, I think you had that first possession where you dribbled up and hit the wide open three. Does, does getting to the rim and, and sort of getting that touch um, there affect or correlate to what you can do in your deeper shots later in the game, build your confidence, anything like that? Um. I just tried to be more aggressive and take my time on shots. Uh, I felt like in game one, I was off balance. Of, um, the two shots I had in the mid range in the first quarter, I actually liked inside the paint. Um, I just missed them. And then just staying confident in my shot, you know, honestly, um, you know, trying to get to the free throw line and, you know, and, and take the basket as well, you know, and find guys I'm making play for myself. So just being more aggressive and not just settling for a jumper, but also against the basket finishing and, and playing through contact and not looking for a whistle. But just going to finish and then if they if the rest blow whistle, then they do. If not, you know, take my time and finish it. And then they kind of just, you know, open up the floor for me um, when I'm driving and, and be able to knock down a mid range, you know, for guys to kind of fall back a little bit to, to kind of stop that, which leaves the three open. So just kind of playing what the defense gives me and, and taking the right shots. Joe Barton. When you're playing in a game like that, you're dunking on them, you smother them defensively, and Dame can't get loose. Do you, do you feel the other team's spirit change? Do you, do you feel energy start to drain, momentum shift, that kind of thing? Um, I mean, anytime you know you're not performing well, um, your energy you know always changes. You know, but you know, with us, we want to take away the confidence as early as possible. You know, because they can get going very quickly. Um, especially Dane, um, him and CJ and, and Melo, you know, so um, we try to do as much as we can to to limit those guys early. You know, if it's if they coming off shoot, you know, it's going to be a tough shot. It's going to be in your face. And if you make it, then, you know, hats off to you, which they can. But, you know, we have to make sure that we're doing everything we can defensively to kind of limit those guys. And, you know, and also on the offensive end, you know, putting them in actions to, you know, kind of tire them down because, those guys are at least scores. And as much as we can to, you know, as they go on the offensive the and try to attack us, you know, we have to do the same thing. And, you know, just trying to make it get tough for those guys all night. Mark Medina. Kevin, yeah, we talked about playing aggressively in games. Are there things you do in particular during the day as far as your routine or pre game warm up? Do you think it's pretty instrumental to get you in that mode? Um, Nothing really changes. 
my routine has always been the same. So there's nothing that's really changed. Um, it's just a matter of going out and doing it, you know. And I think I know, I mean, especially Gron, you know, he didn't say one word to me today, but he kind of already, I mean, he kind of knew. He saw the look on my face from the beginning. But it's just a matter of going out and doing it, you know, and, and just playing a lot of energy and effort, which you can control. You know, I can control how hard I play, how much effort I play with. I can control about, you know, shots being made. Um, but I can control how I play on the defensive end. And I can control my energy and effort. All right, Tanisha, I think you have a few on your end. Yeah, last three. Melissa. Hey, D. Um, mentally speaking, with everything going on, did you feel like you needed the performance like this and the team needed a win like this? I just feel like we needed a win. You know, we don't want to go down 0-2 in the series. And, you know, our entire uh, mindset the entire season has been, you know, never lose two in a row. And we just want to come out very scrappy, you know, kind of the same way we did in game one. Um, and just have a lot of confidence in making shots. But, you know, you, you, know, you never want to go down 0-2 in the series. And, you know, it was a, a must-win game for us. And we, we played that way, played with a sense of desperation and a sense of urgency. And, um like I said, to be able to hold that team, you know, the 88 points who have been playing extremely well in this bubble, um, off the rating is, is off the charts. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's great for our team, great for our defense, but, you know, it's still one game. And, um, you know, it, we got three games to go um, or three more wins to go. And, you know, we just want to make sure we come up with the same energy we did tonight. Anthony. You, you mentioned that, you know, you asked coaches and teammates about your, your game one, and they, they thought that you played better maybe than the, the stat line, at least offensively. Said, when you went back and looked at it, though, what did you find uh, that you didn't think, you know, was up to your standard, and, and, you know, how did you work to change that tonight? Um, defensively. It was plays on defensive end that I usually make. Um, I was hesitant in rotations. Um, you know, they were getting a lot of easy layups at the rim offensive rebounds and so and that's all the effort thing energy thing um and so I, I just try to make the adjustment to just play free you know i know the reads and i know the, the, the rotation that i have to make and um, we're all on the string tonight um but me just talking to the team and kind of being that defensive anchor um that i've always been you know just kind of help the entire team tonight last question lauren Hey, D, uh, quick question from LA. I know that LeBron mentioned just a moments ago um, comparing you to, or not comparing you, but um, putting you in the category of some of his former teammates in Kyrie and Dwayne Wade. And what has the relationship with LeBron been like for you to kind of enable you to um, have the confidence and make sure that you guys are, are clicking on all cylinders um, when you're down, you know, 0-1 in a series? Um, and I, was down, I was really down on myself uh, after game one. Like I said, I didn't feel like I performed to the level I needed to. And um, he let me have my moment, you know, and, and you know, kind of get, get on myself. And then, uh, you know, he talked to me and said I was fine. Um, he said one game. And um, as a guy who's won multiple championships and, and been in these situations before, um, he knows what to expect. Um, he know what he expect from his teammates, and you know he just kind of just was there for me to, to kind of encourage me and, and keep me level headed because it is it was just one game, you know. Um, but our relationship has been great you know, the entire season. I just kind of just been leaning on him to this entire season. I'm just trying to figure out um, the the tricks and trades of of you know playing with a guy you know, like him and um, you know a team like this. And it's, it's been it's been fun. It's been great. You know, the on court chemistry is clicked from day one. Um, off court chemistry. I mean, you guys see it all the time on social media and stuff. How close we are. But um, on court, no, I never played with a guy you know of his caliber. Um, and to be able to have the success that we're having so far um, is great. And just kind of you know, you know he's just been standing in my ear about um, everything, especially through you know the playoffs right now. Um, you know, he he's seen it all. 
um, in the 25 years he's been playing. So, <laughs> so um, you know, he, he he's kind of just, you know, you know, been there for me and just, you know, supporting me and just kind of, you know, guiding me through this entire, entire process. <laughs> Thanks, Eddie. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks, everybody.